The easy way to do this video would be to explain that the Sensei wireless is basically the Sensei with like an upgraded sensor that goes up to 8200 CPI natively in 50 CPI increments and up to 16,400 CPI with the SteelSeries Engine 3 software and some fancy interpolation, although I doubt any of that will be necessary since even on a 1440p monitor, anything that high will be beyond being able to control, but they also removed a wire, so I guess we'll need a full video for this. With its factory tuning and data center DNA, an Intel 730 series SSD is an amazing choice for gamers and performance enthusiasts. So let's open up with a physical tour of the mouse. My immediate impression was one of relief that SteelSeries has ditched the glossy plastic of the Sensei and gone back to a soft touch finish like the Zai and the Ikari series. Bravo SteelSeries hard plastic is sucky and I really like this implementation. Now a tour of the buttons. They are all completely remappable with a pretty comprehensive list of individual commands or macros that can be set up with no delay, a recorded delay, or a predetermined delay. And starting on the top we've got your standard left and right click with a middle click scroll wheel that has a very satisfying resistance as you scroll and a great rubber texture. Some people will be turned off by the fact that that scroll wheel does not include tilt but personally I find tilt a little bit hard to use without accidentally clicking it anyway so I don't miss it. And then finally the last button on top is a CPI toggle that you can use as a sniper mode if you want or reprogram it to whatever else if you want anyway. On the sides the mouse is ambidextrous so there are two buttons on each side for your pinky or your thumb depending on whether you're a righty or a southpaw. And then finally on the bottom, you've got the sensor, charging contacts for the internal battery, a power switch, a connect button that I never had to use, and finally, a cable lock for when you want to switch to wired mode. A nice touch. In terms of customizability, the mouse has three different lighting zones, each of which can be used to indicate battery status with green, yellow, and red color codes, or be configured to glow any color you want with either a steady glow or a breathing effect. The zones are on the sides of the scroll wheel, the SteelSeries logo at the back of the mouse, and finally, around the outside of the base station where the mouse goes on top of it. Speaking of the base station, I actually really like the implementation here. There's only so much you can do to make a mouse feel premium without making it heavy. So SteelSeries has thrown that premiumness into the base station. It's a flat charging dock that has a really high-end, you know, nice heft to its construction with a thick aluminum top plate and then a great rubberized grippy bottom so it's not going to go anywhere. It's flat so the mouse is very easy to put in place and have it be charging and the braided cable that plugs into it looks and feels nice and not only that but it acts as an auxiliary cord for the mouse as well. Now, I would have preferred an additional cable that goes from the base station to the mouse so that you don't have to unplug and then replug the mouse in while switching and wait for it to be redetected, but maybe we'll get a feature like that in revision two somewhere down the line. Back on the subject of the weight of the mouse though, the Sensei Wireless is on the heavy side at about 117 grams. And considering that compared to other, you know, competitive gaming mice, it needs a battery, then I guess that weight seems pretty reasonable. I mean, it's almost exactly the same as the Logitech G502 without any added weights, which is a wired mouse, and only about five grams more than the old Sensei, but... As an old school Akari laser user, I might have liked something a bit lighter with an optional weight system if they could swing it. Again, I understand the constraints given that it is wireless. And that's about it for hardware. So let's move on to the software. SteelSeries Engine has evolved a lot and supports an unlimited number of profiles now that you can trigger with application or game launches with the usual suspect adjustments such as lift distance, angle snapping, pulling rate, and acceleration control in there as well. That's all old stuff though. The big new feature that's being introduced with the Sensei Wireless but actually works with other devices as well is SteelSeries Cloud. It basically just syncs your profiles across devices whenever you sign into SteelSeries Engine 3 in much the same way that competing solutions do with a big part of the pitch being that you aren't being forced to use it. If you do decide to use it, the sign up process takes a few seconds and they just ask for a name, email address, and password. You can give them your birthday and gender if you want, but if you don't feel like it, you can just press skip. Neat. Final thoughts time. Since it weighs about the same 
and to the best of my ability to perceive it, performs exactly the same as an equivalent wired gaming mouse, there are only a couple of things to really discuss in this conclusion. First is the convenience of being able to use it from the couch aside, whether I think it's worth it to deal with the hassle of recharging versus the hassle of cord drag. To start with, the 16 hour battery life is not very impressive. While it's enough for any but the most hardcore gaming sessions, and a flat, easy to align, aesthetically pleasing charger is a heck of a lot better than a finicky one like the one that came with my first wireless mouse in the Logitech MX Duo, hardcore gamers will have to charge their mouse every day or two or keep an eye on the colored battery indicator to avoid needing to switch to wired mode from time to time. Something that would bother me less if it wasn't for the whole redetection thing. The second is the controversial continued use of laser sensors that boast massive DPI or CPI ratings, but are known to have acceleration even if you turn it off compared to less expensive optical sensors like the Pixar 3090 and 3310 that do not. I understand that it puts SteelSeries in an awkward position since they'd be saving only a couple of bucks on the sensor, so they'd be trying to market a $150 wireless mouse that doesn't have top of the line specs in every category against their competitors, and I realize that a big part of the problem is the consumers who are mindlessly shopping by bigger numbers or whatever mouse some pro player I think is cool uses. But I would like to see SteelSeries use the most appropriate hardware rather than what sounds better. I wouldn't ask this of just anyone, but I think SteelSeries, leaders that they are in the gaming peripheral space, have a responsibility to invest in educating gamers about the real world gaming experience that a perfect sensor delivers versus one with amped up CPI. But maybe most people will think I'm just being a crusader over nothing here. I mean, if you're using a laser mouse already and it's not bothering you, then this one won't bother you either. So if you like everything else about it, the overall performance of the Sensei Wireless can't be faulted. Enjoy your new gaming mouse if you've got the bling bling to afford one of them. Thank you for watching guys. The link for where to find pricing for this product is in the video description below the like, dislike, and share buttons, which you should use accordingly. Also in the video description is a support link that we'd love for you to use if you appreciate what we do. You can give us a monthly contribution, you can buy a t-shirt, or you can change your browser bookmarks to sites that give us an affiliate kickback whenever you buy stuff such as amazon.com. It helps us out a lot. Thanks again for watching and as always, don't forget to subscribe.